Entrepreneur India is with Shashi Reddy, an old-time entrepreneur, and he calls himself a new investor. Uh, he's got uh, the taste for Indian consumer uh, space. He's going to tell you what's most exciting and uh, why he's in India. Yes, I would say that uh, in the last two years, some of the changes that have happened with regard to all the new initiatives, uh, UPI, Aadhaar Card, EKYC, Digital Locker, all those things. I think all of these put together create what I believe to be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to uh, invest in India now. I think there's no better time for people to start companies that are able to fully leverage digital India, their India stack. And that is where I'm looking for opportunities to invest. I see. Uh, so you're you're actually Indian who's now uh, based in the United States. Yes, that's right. So you've seen both sides of uh, the world. Uh, tell me, uh, how advanced do you feel uh, India is becoming? At what speed? And do you feel that India can surpass its uh, competitors uh, with the backing of investors like you, as well as the innovation that startups today are leading in India? So when I first started to invest, uh, I started investing enterprise software because that's an area where because of the IT services companies having had a lot of success a lot of people know how to sell to large companies so when you invest in enterprise software software that's being built here serving US enterprise customers that's a market that all of us understand we've uh, been in that market for many many years there's a lot of talent there so that's where we started to focus but in terms of the scope of opportunity I think this Indian consumer focus is going to be much larger than the opportunity that we've been used to with enterprise software. So that is, you know, in terms of uh, moving ahead, I think one of the things that you have to look at, which is really stunning if you tell anybody, is that in India today, you can open a bank account with your smartphone, right, using a thumbprint and uh, EKYC and all that. That is something that cannot be done anywhere else in the world. So it's almost like we're going from a point where nothing could be done without enormous pain to a point where you can do everything so easily. So you can just imagine the types of opportunities that will get opened up with uh, these changes. So, so that's why I'm very excited. So though I spent a lot of years looking at enterprise tech, I think the real opportunity going forward for me at least is going to be India stack and digital India. I see. I see. Uh, you know, in your uh, so many years of uh, being an entrepreneur, you've done for companies. Uh, you're now also investing. Uh, what do you think uh, should uh, an investor really have to be able to sustain? Today, Indian startups face the problem of not being able to sustain due to diverse issues. You know, how does one enable sustainability, and how does one ensure that uh, they are able to continue their venture? With, with, of course, amendments and uh, changes with time, but uh, believe in the idea and continue the work that they do. So I think you know, some of the problems faced earlier, I think, don't exist anymore. So what happened if we go back five years and look at the startup ecosystem here? We had a lot of first-time entrepreneurs. One, the local opportunity was not big enough to sustain any real companies, right? And third, there's not enough like real capital available. I think all three have now been gone away. because right now you have a lot of people are second time, third time entrepreneurs. So there's right. a maturing startup ecosystem. Secondly, there's a lot of capital now that's starting to come in. In fact, in the last I think 12 to 18 months, if you look at the data, I think more venture capital has been raised and so much capital sitting on the sidelines. So you have that. And the third aspect of it is what we talked about earlier that thanks to the digital India opportunity, the local opportunity is now massive. So all three factors I think are fully aligned for the next 10 years will be very different than some of the challenges faced in the last 10 years. I see, I see. So in line with the, the change in uh, the situation, startups also need to plan accordingly to uh, attain sustainability. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that it's going to be easier now. Given that there's more experienced talent in the startup world, there's more capital and there's a bigger local opportunity. See, when you have a big opportunity and have some capital, you can afford to make a lot of mistakes. So automatically you'll become more sustainable. Right. In that type of situation where the market is big enough that you can make a lot of mistakes. Right, right. Uh, Mr. Reddy, there has been uh, enough conversation in the market about uh, uh, VC spoiling the eco culture uh, because of overfunding, dumping capital. This is something that's come up time and again. Everybody needs capital, startup ecosystem can sustain yeah. only when there is capital. 
and uh, bigger companies need to be strengthened more for them to become unicorns or even bigger giants than unicorns. Uh, but uh, on the subject of capital dumping, do you agree that uh, VCs have played a role in uh, spoiling the eco culture? And uh, have do you feel that VCs are actually not uh, being sensitive to uh, what the ecosystem should look like? That was an excellent point. I think we went through a period of two years specifically where suddenly a lot of money came in and big checks were written to companies that were not ready to absorb that kind of capital. And naturally, as one would expect, a lot of people got burnt. And naturally, as one would expect, then suddenly everyone pulled back and then there was a shortage of funding for a little bit. But I think that learning has happened. And I think the difference now is that um, because of the opportunity being bigger, I think now more capital can be absorbed well by these startups. But you're right, I think for like two years, uh, that really set back this, the whole ecosystem by too much capital coming in, chasing the same small set of deals, and these guys were not at a stage that they could absorb that degree of capital. And that really messed up the whole ecosystem. Right. Uh, my last question. Uh, with respect to sectors like solar, or sectors like renewable energy, uh, sectors like uh, social health. Uh, these are segments that India needs investment in and India needs innovation in. You know, uh, do you feel that um, uh, you know VCs like you can actually uh, do their bit, their own contribution in this segment? And uh, how does a country like India attract uh, VCs globally to invest into sectors like this? China is far ahead of us in this segment whereas you know we have a bigger opportunity than China keeping in mind our resources as well as uh, you know, our uh, population's uh, strength. So some sectors are of course difficult for like traditional venture capital. So I think you have to take that as like a given that not every sector is open for venture capital. But of the sectors that you mentioned for example, uh, low cost healthcare, that is quite fundable by these things. In fact, you will see like a lot of capital coming in and I think a lot of people are interested actually to find innovations that are very low cost that we can deploy in India because the same innovation can be deployed anywhere else in the world. Sure. So, uh, low cost healthcare is a very interesting topic for a lot of people. Ag tech or uh, tech that's going to help your farming and agriculture, that's again, now a lot of interest, uh, you have uh, some funds that are being formed like you know, Omnivore and some others that focus only on ag tech. So I think some of the sectors will see uh, a lot of capital coming in, but there are some sectors that are fundamentally not so good for venture investment. I see. I see. So you mean to say the government backing would be Yeah, it's required for so many things where that you really need some top-down support before it can take off. Right, right. Your top three tips for Indian startups to get capital. Get capital. Um, so I would say my number one tip would be a very simple message and that's where like a lot of startups struggle just getting across what they do in a very simple one or two sentences. I think that's a big challenge. The second uh, tip is that there's really no like a part-time entrepreneurship. You really have to jump in and do it full-time and be totally committed to it. And you, you have to show people that you're committed to it by you know, not to take too much. And the third is to, uh, I mean, my view is to think small. Uh, that they pick, meaning that pick a small problem, solve it fully, show real value, and then you can try to figure out how to conquer the world. But start small. Right, right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.